Let's move on and talk about weather and a little bit about climate very briefly. We know that energy is required to drive changes in anything, so certainly anything on Earth's surface, but really if matter is changing, energy is involved. So what is the energy that is moving material around in this water cycle, in the hydrologic cycle? Your hint comes from this diagram here, it's the sun. Solar energy comes in and allows evaporation to happen because it's going to heat up that surface layer and cause some of those water molecules to escape the liquid and enter the gas phase. And that's all because of the energy of the sun being added to it. But we know also that energy can't be created or destroyed. So that energy has to go somewhere after it evaporates. Eventually, it goes into the energy of storms. Right? So we know that things like thunderstorms and hurricanes are pretty energetic phenomena. There are strong winds, driving rain, um, lightning, and all of these are ultimately sourced from that solar energy. Let's look at the global pattern of where rain is happening. So your, your grays to red, this is sort of your desert zone, and we can see that there's a desert band right around here. And there's a little bit of it in the, the southwest there. And in the southern hemisphere, another band of deserts around that area. Turns out that there's pretty low precipitation around there. And then in between, right along this line here, is a zone of pretty high precipitation. And that's the equator here. So when we're looking at the water cycle, there is a lot of precipitation happening near the equator. And then at uh, latitudes of about 30 degrees north and south, there's relatively little precipitation. These are bands of desert surrounding the, the very wet tropics. And then in the temperate zone above that, there's a moderate amount of precipitation. In the US, we just look in the US, um, it's a little bit different. Uh, we see that there's high precipitation in the south, the northeast, and especially in the Pacific Northwest. And then there's pretty low precipitation, well, both in the Alaskan Arctic and then in the West and especially the Southwest. There's a lot, uh, or there's a, a dearth of precipitation there. There's lots of deserts in the American Southwest. So what is it that drives both of these patterns? Let me back up one more step and explain something before we get to that. We wanna talk about what convection is because that's going to be important when we're talking about how storms work and how Earth um, and the water cycle actually moves on Earth's surface because of rising and falling air. And that's driven by convection. We've seen this before when talking about how solid material in the mantle heats up near the core boundary, rises, cools off, gets more dense, and falls down. And that's what drives plate tectonics. Convection is also what causes water to move in a boiling pot of water. So the water sinks, it gets hot, it expands and it rises. And then as it cools down, it gets more dense and it sinks again. And it creates the cycle in your pot of boiling water. The same thing happens in air at Earth's surface. In some places, it's going to heat up more and it heats up more where the sun's rays strike most directly. So the area of the sun's rays is most concentrated near the equator. And so that's why the equator is hotter than the poles. In contrast at the poles, that energy from the sun has to spread out over a pretty wide area. So that, that sunlight ends up, you could think of it sort of being diluted, right? And so it's going to warm up that area a lot less than it warms up the equator. And as a result, the most heating is going to happen here. And here's where air is going to rise and near the poles, air is going to sink. If life were simple, it could stop there. And we could think about the convection cell rising at the equator and then sinking at the poles. Unfortunately, that's not entirely how things happen. Instead, two things complicate things. First, the world is turning. Sun rises in the east and sets in the west because the earth is spinning on its axis, Los Angeles chasing New York in that direction. Also, the air doesn't make it all the way to the poles before it sinks. And so we end up with sort of a stacked set of these circulation cells. 
that looks something like this. These are called Hadley cells. And that refers to the global belts of rising and falling air that are caused by convection. So that would be one Hadley cell here, where it rises at the equator and then it sinks around 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. And then the air flows along the surface back toward the equator, those spots. There's a complementary cell that actually rises at 60 degrees north and then sinks at 30 degrees south. And then there's another little cell that rises at 60 degrees north and then sinks at the poles. So like this is really the main one that's getting driven by the sun. And then this one's sort of along for the ride there, right? It's rising at 60 and sinking at 30 still. And that can be a little counterintuitive, but if you remember that all the air is sinking at 30 degrees south, it can help you remember that. These patterns of rising and falling air are going to control major global precipitation patterns. And that's because where air rises, it takes all of its moisture from that evaporation with it. And it rises and then it cools off and allows it to form clouds and rain. So this tropical air, it's hot, it's full of moisture, it rises, it forms these thunderstorms. And so you get lots of water in the atmosphere near the tropics that rains out as big old thunderstorms. But then as it rains out, the air becomes much more dry. And then that dry air moves through its atmosphere until it hits about 30 degrees latitude, and then it sinks. And now it's sinking, it's increasing its pressure, it doesn't have very much moisture in it. And as a result, there's not gonna be very much rain happening at 30 degrees north and south. And so where that sinking air is, those desert belts form. So as I said, those Hadley cells are going to explain that first pattern we saw, which is why the equator is wet, where the sun is hitting the most strongly, and then that air rises, rains out, and then moves up to about 30 degrees north, where it sinks and causes the big desert belts that we know in the Sahara, in Western Asia, in Australia, and in part of the American Southwest. But not uh, the American Southeast, luckily, and that's because there's some water close by that adds some moisture to it in the Gulf of Mexico. Without that Gulf of Mexico, the Southeast US might actually be a desert. But because of that nearby moisture and because of the rain that we know generally moves from west to east here, we end up being a lot wetter in the south than we otherwise would be. One other major control on where there are deserts and where it's rainy is called orographic lifting. And that is mountains forcing it to be rainy in some spots versus others based on where the wind is moving and forcing itself over those mountains. So where you have wind blowing generally from west to east, it's going to blow and it's gonna hit a mountain and it's gonna push upward. And as it pushes upward, it's bringing its moisture with it and it's cooling off as it rises. As it cools off, it forms clouds and it forms precipitation. So on the windward side, the side that the wind is coming from, you get lots of rain. And on the leeward side, now you have dry descending air and you get very little rain on that side. So this orographic, this mountain lifting, causes the windward side to be rainy and wet and the leeward side to be dry and deserty. And that is what describes why it's so wet in this part of the Northwestern US, the Pacific Northwest because there's a big belt of mountains right here, a couple belts actually, and the wind blowing this way goes up over the mountains, rains out on the windward side, and then is dry sinking on the leeward side. And so it ends up creating much drier conditions in Eastern Oregon and Washington and out in Nevada than in uh, Western Washington, Oregon and, and Northern California. 